Thanks for joining us for City Council Comments. I'm Steve Erickson along with Mayor Jerry Cook. Today we're talking about both the November 1st and the November 15th City Council meeting. Thanks for being here today, Jerry. Absolutely, thanks for having me. We are now in this post-election era and we had uh, several seats on the City Council that were up for re-election and we're gonna have two new faces come 2017. Well, we are. After, um, oh gosh, um, I think Denise Clint has represented Ward 1 since 1999 or That's something. That's right, yep. Um, she decided that it was time for her to not run again. And uh, Council Member uh, Ron Manning from Ward 2, who's done a couple stints on the council, took a little uh, four-year hiatus there, um, decided not to run again. So there were two open seats. Yep. And uh, Ward 1, I think there were originally seven in the primary, or six or seven in the primary. Yep. Um, brought it down to, it was Julia Stevens and Brad Griscoviak ran in Ward 1, and um, Brad Griscoviak was successfully uh, elected and will be the next Ward 1 council member. Yep. Ward 2 was uh, Bill Kicker and Greg Leone ran there, and Bill Kicker successfully was elected. And he will be sworn in also, uh, I think January 3rd or thereabouts, wherever yes, that the first, first meeting, it is first the meeting third, of January. Yes. Um, and then of course, uh, Ward 4, Jenny Geisler was appointed to serve out my term after I was elected mayor, and uh, and then she ran for her first four-year four term against Chuck Filipsic and was successful, and so she'll be sworn in for her first four full years. And then, of course, Steve Wells had a nail-biter, right, you know, right. unopposed. All those write-ins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, 400 or right, something, right. but uh, so but he won with uh, 20, over 23,000 votes, so... Steve will, be, will continue on for another four years at least in our uh, council member at large seat. So two new, se two new faces and two more four-year terms for a uh, couple, couple that are already there. All right, and we do uh, even your elections now. So basically there's four council seats up, two years later there's three up and then back to four and back to three. So. Right, yeah, and, and Coon Rapids was uh, kind of reflected in Oka County as far as we hit over 90% um, voter turnout. Um, the morning of the uh, election, I think we had, um, I just said it here, there was um, registered as of 7 a.m. We had over 37,000 potential. Um, there were over, there were 4,000 that registered that day, and uh, there were actually 33,065 that voted that day. Wow. So it figured out to be, you know, 90%. So people like to participate around here. That's a good thing. Yeah, and the other thing this year, which was new, was the whole uh, that you could vote absentee for any reason. This was the first presidential election, and we've had about triple the number of people that voted absentee previously voted this time. So I know that was sort of overwhelming to the clerk's office and a lot of clerks in the area that probably weren't expecting all those long lines to absentee vote. Yep, it was, it was like that at the county, and I would come down here and you would just see the clerks would just be working the front counter yeah. all day. Um, yeah, the uh, number of accepted regular military and overseas absentee ballots and mail ballots, and most of those were cast right at the front desk over there, um, 6,998, so almost 7,000 of those that voted in Coon Rapids voted absentee. Yeah. So, yeah, it's huge. It's great to see. And then even at the polls, I think some of that absentee brought them up, you know, it wasn't as busy at the polls as you would expect to see on a presidential election because a lot of folks just did it before election day. Was there a presidential election that day, too? Uh, yeah, I think there was. <laughs> but we're only talking about the local right now. Yes, we're only talking about the local race. <laughs> so yeah. congratulations to all our winners. And Absolutely. like you said, they'll be sworn in at the Tuesday, January 3rd meeting, which is the first one of 2017. Yeah, we're going to miss Ron and Denise, but we're looking forward to uh, a new council, and it's going to be, it should be real good going forward. All right. Well, let's move into our uh, council meeting from November 15th. One of the first items we want to talk about there is a certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting that was given to one of our members of the finance department. Um, yeah, and it seems like this was something that, uh, I think this is the one that Kevin Volk used to receive. And then Kevin Volk, of course, um, retired and left the city here. And uh, Fran Hansen, Francine Hansen moved into that spot. But while she was in this role, um, 
Um, she received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report for year ending December 31st, 2015. Um, so yeah, no, I, I guess my takeaway from that is that we have a very well organized and run financial department over there and I think we're in good hands. That's kind of my takeaway. All right, and always good to be uh, getting those awards and certificates of achievement. Yep, yeah, because this is this is not their first one, and it's uh, they have a consistent history of good work over there, and I think the residents can feel comfortable that their money is being managed well. All right. Well, now that there is a potential for snow, we're moving into winter, so then our, our season after that, right, will be road construction. So it seems fitting to be talking about 27 street reconstruction we're already getting plans geared up for construction in 2017 and, and a lot of it and a lot of it normally I read all the streets that are going to be impacted and there were uh, like I think 50 streets that I would have had to have listed off um, it's a total of about 10 miles I think so the uh, um, we're looking at reconstruction of three miles uh, reconstruction of a mile and a half uh, reconstruction or mill and overlay of another three, so that's six, seven and a half, and another uh, 2.9 miles of reconstruction. So over, yeah, more than 10 miles of residential streets next year, including another segment of our Minnesota State Aid roads. And I will list those because those are the ones that a lot of cars use. That's why there are MSA streets. Right. Uh, so 101st Avenue from Foley to University, 121st Avenue from Foley to University, and then Shenandoah Boulevard from 122nd up to 124th. So those will be the, the MSA streets that will be done. And then just lots of residential streets and about a dozen cul-de-sacs and yeah. a lot going on. Yeah, and this is a couple of years now. This must be at least, what, the third year for 2017 where we've been picking up the pace as far as the number of miles of streets that are being done and I've been advancing some of the funding for that yeah so we really ramped up the Minnesota State Aid roads um, that so they did a calculation the beginning of last year the end of the year before I've, I don't have a timeline yeah. now um, where they figured out that if they just took off a big chunk of the roads because they were all in such tough shape yeah. and then bond for it that we could then pay it back with the uh, um, with the contribution from the state mm -hmm. for that, so those state aid roads, and we would be money ahead because every year the cost of construction goes up. Right. Um, so it gets a lot of it done, but it does put a lot of Coon Rapids under construction all at one time. Yeah, which is why we're seeing a lot more of those orange cones out each year here. Yeah, well, yeah, and some of them it's really intense because if they've had water main breaks or some of them they need to redo the storm sewer. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of construction going on. All right, but good to get those roads fixed. And uh, I know you mentioned that Mississippi Boulevard was just recently finished. That had been under, const under construction most of this year, correct? Yep, yes, yeah. So they started, they went from Hanson all the way up to uh, Coon Rapids Boulevard. And they had to time it around the college. They had to time it around the 4th of July celebration beca because the parade also goes on the road. Right. And, uh, and they just finished and... Uh, a couple little things left apparently, but it, it looks great. Yeah, and I know there was some discussion at this meeting as well. Someone brought up the fact that Foley Boulevard is not done. Is that and the fact that it might not be done? Foley will not be done winter? this year. Foley, they're trying to get it passable this year. They've got the the temporary water um, connections because that's a huge project. That's the water mains. That's some storm sewer. It, it's a very large project, and it. it it's, just, it's not going to be done this year. Yeah. And they got a late start, is that part And they of it got a late too? start. Yeah. yeah. So, right, so it'll be, it'll be passable, but it's really, it's going to be a mess. And, but it'll be, it'll be passable, and it's going to be really nice when it's done. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, any of these street reconstruction projects that affect folks that are going to be assessed, anything like that, they will get notice at their home, correct? Yeah, yeah, they will receive notice. And if you live on a corner, if you've already paid for, this, for the street on one side of you, you're not you're not going to be asked to pay for the street on the other side. Right. So if if that ever comes up, just make sure you call engineering and say, hey, I got a bill, I already paid for the other street. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll talk more about street construction for next year in the next coming months. But again, if you're wondering what these streets are, you can always go on to the city's website, coonrapidsmn.gov, and 
You can check out every city council agenda, every planning commission agenda, but within the council agenda, you'll see all the documents and all the maps for all of the street reconstruction projects. Yep. Yes, yes, you will. And, a lot of fun reading. And you will, you will get a notice, and there will be, a, there will be an open house, you know, preceding this because they like to meet with the residents and, right. and find out if there's, if there's problems or that they're not aware of down there. I know we've had neighborhoods where the residents have said, "Did you know that the water collects here or there?" And they go, "Oh, well, then we better re-engineer that a little bit." Yeah. So, all right. Council adopted a resolution. Uh, this one calls for the bonds of 2008A, and this was basically to save some money. Yeah, so these were, uh, this was a bond that was taken out in 2008, and they were, uh, they would have matured in 18 and, or 19, and, but they're high interest rates, they're four and a quarter percent because of when they were taken out. So we had the uh, $320,000 available, so they, uh, there's sufficient cash available in the improvement fund for assessments paid early to pay off the bonds so they are paying those off. It's kind of like your mortgage. You know, you can pay it off early. You know, your mortgage you can pay off anytime. These, right. there are certain windows of time where they can be paid down or paid off, and that's the window we hit, and we had the cash. People have paid off their, uh, so when you do the street reconstruction, everybody pays um, their assessment for their portion, and then you get 10 years to pay it back. That money comes in early, then we can pay the bonds back early. Yeah. Well, anytime you can save money, that's certainly a good thing. Yeah. All right. Well, I got so excited about street reconstruction, I noticed I jumped over the public hearing we had, which was on uh, setting 2017 fees and charges. This is sort of an annual thing that's done. Yeah. So they they look and see if they're if all of the, if the fees that are being charged for the the parks, for the building inspections, for the licensing, for all of those, are they do they reflect what it's actually what the value is. Um, you know, there's there's some part of administration for each fee, you know, and then you also kind of have to be competitive too. You know, you don't want to, if if you are charging this much for a building inspection, whereas another community is only charging this, well, why is that? So right. you, you want to be competitive as well. Um, so it was primarily following the two and a half percent adjustment, rounding off to five dollars. Some of them went up, some of them didn't. Um, a few things actually went down. They found out that they were charging a significant amount for the reinspections, and they re they thought, well, that's out of line, so they adjusted those back. So, added some licensing fees. Yeah. Um, previously, we never had um, the option to have micro distilleries or or tap rooms in town, so we had to create an ordinance that allowed them, and then an opportunity to license them. Right. So we had to add those license fees. So. All right, so council adopted those resolutions to update all of those fees. We also had another uh, adoption of resolutions. This is establishing fees and charges for the use of city park facilities and adult sports leagues. Yeah, and, and it was kind of the same thing. Um, the, the one exception in there was for softball fields. Um, softball fields were really inexpensive, and now that we have the completely remodeled, you know, reconfigured Sand Creek Park up there, they brought those fees more in line with the rest of the sports. Um, apparently that made sense. Yeah. All right. So that yeah. updated as well. All right. We'll move along to an item that was approving expenditures. This is for playground equipment for the 2017 Park Improvement Project. This is also we've been talking about doing various parks in the city for a couple of years, and we have some more slated for next year. Right. Yeah. And, and a, lot of, a lot of work has gone into Boulevard Park, um, which is the area around the Ice Center. Because when we first started this park bond referendum, uh, they, they, there was an, a desire to have a park area there, but at that time it wasn't the community festival, it wasn't the the area for everything else. Right. When Sand Creek started under construction, we needed to move the Fourth of July celebration. That seemed like the obvious spot to move it to, and it was so successful. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we couldn't go back to Sand Creek because of all the new fields and the fences, mm -hmm. well, now it sort of changed the purpose of Boulevard Park. So it's grown now. So we're adding, a, next year we'll be adding a splash pad, which I think kind of was in the first calculations. But the scope of it is expanded because of all of the use down there. So this specific thing is for the playground equipment. 
Uh, there was an opportunity to get playground equipment for 50% off if we ordered it as of last Tuesday. Okay. So the park commission looked at it Monday night and we all looked at different pictures of it and it, some really cool stuff. Yeah. And so it allows us to get a lot of playground equipment more than we would have been able to get for the money, 50% off. So we ordered the equipment for Boulevard Park and the soccer complex is getting new equipment as well. Okay, so those projects will be going in next year, that equipment. Uh, Boulevard Park specifically won't be started until after the 4th of July celebration, correct? They're doing it, I believe they're doing it right after the 4th of July celebration. That sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, because it's being done in 2017, but they're not going to start it until yeah, right I, after the festival concludes. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah I, I, now I, re I recall that. That's now. what I recall. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, so hopefully it's if we both recall as well. it, then that's probably what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense because they're doing it next year, but they don't want to disrupt the 4th of July celebration, you know, but they'll probably get going on it right away, you know, July 5th or whatever, so. Yeah, kind of like they did the street reconstruction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we had to talk about uh, on our meeting on November 5th. We're going to jump back to our first meeting of the month, which was held on November 1st. Uh, we had a discussion on a new ordinance, and it was adopted. Uh, this is creating a misdemeanor penalty for failure to have rabies vaccinations, and we did have a little bit of discussion on this. Well, we did have a lot of converse, uh, conversation about it, discussion, because... Um, because now it, it's it's really it seems pretty punitive um, that you can actually be charged with a misdemeanor if you don't um, if your dog doesn't have a rabies shot. Mm -hmm. But it, our our police department felt they didn't have, and our city attorney felt they didn't have the tools they needed to um, to get people to to get their dogs um, vaccinated. Yeah. So. It, you know, and there's a there's a very good CAP program that goes along with it. It's primarily just get your dog vaccine. You know, right. get your dogs vaccinated. Right. We don't we don't want to have to use this. Mm -hmm. And if you know, as long as you come in and give proof that the dog is is has you've had it vaccinated, and there's a little CAP program, there'll be a little educational program that you might take, and then there won't be anything on your record. If you make a habit of it or insist on not getting it vaccinated, well, then that'll be a different issue. Right. But there's but, a policy uh, in place. But I mean, like you said, place. this does basically charge someone with a crime, but mm -hmm. they can divert it and not have it go on their record if they complete the CAP program, which I know is important to, to certainly some of the council members to do that. Yep. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it didn't sound, it seemed unusually harsh, but it's, it's really only going to be harsh for somebody that refuses to get their dog you know, get the rabies right. vaccine. Um, and, and that's really not responsible dog ownership, so. Yeah, so yeah. hopefully it doesn't come to that, but there is a policy in place now that does allow to make sure people get those rab rabies vaccinations. Yes. All right. A lot of discussion on this next item. This was adoption of an ordinance uh, changing the zoning of office, general, commercial, and moderate density residential to high density residential. We're talking about the old Pedersen's uh, floral, old Pedersen floral site and surrounding area right off Coon Rapids Boulevard. Um, and there was a lot of discussion on this. In the end, it was adopted on a split vote to change the zoning and change the land use. Yes. So the the Pedersen Floral area, it's really you know it, it was it was a it was a great operation back in the day when it was operating as Pedersen Floral, yep. but it hasn't been operating as that since I, I don't know a dozen years. I, it's been a long time, yep. and it's really become it looks fairly blighted. It's you know. So we've been, they've been trying to find some use for it. We've had high density residential come to us before and it hasn't gone through. In this case, they went and found really a new, or they found a different group and it's a group that's done a lot of work in Coon Rapids. Mm -hmm. And uh, they really, very compelling that they really like doing work in Coon Rapids. Mm -hmm. And they, they created a proposal for a building that would fit on their, um, there, there's all these concerns. Um, there's concerns of traffic on 115th, the street behind, because there's a road, an opportunity to go out. Well, in this particular use, one third of the cars would be able to get in through that back entrance and park in, in, in an internal garage, and that would be the only use for that street, would be one third of the cars, like 32 cars. Um, and everybody else would have to do right in, right out from Coon Rapids Boulevard. There's a, there's a single family home back there with a pool that, you know, anything of height becomes a real privacy issue for them. 
they pushed the building up and over as far as they could get away from that to try and preserve their privacy. And it's just a, it's a very cool building. It's a really intense use, what they are proposing. Mm -hmm. um, but now let me back up to what this actually is. What we looked at for that night is changing the zoning. And because it's part of the River, Rap River Rapids overlay, it only allows seven units per acre. So what we approved in this zoning change was up to basically on two and a half acres, I think the parcel is, it's really only about 17, 17 units mm -hmm. is all that's authorized right now. Um, now, the next step will be um, they'll, they'll need to come back for a use flexibility to actually build what they want to build there. It, it's just a very exciting investment and I'm part of, I, I would like us to see, I'd like to see us moving forward on that. The majority of the council passed for the zoning. It was very contentious because the neighbors in the back have a very quiet little street there and they don't want that traffic. Um, it's, it's just been a very, we struggled a lot with that parcel. Mm -hmm. So this was just a change in the zoning. It was, uh, there was a lot, of, a lot of discussion over it and it did pass four to three. The next item that we're gonna talk about is now the land use. Your land use has to match your zoning. And so that was a, a much shorter conversation because once the zoning was passed, well, your land use has to meet that so, um, or match that. So that's, that was the next item and the land use passed uh, five to two. That, okay. I think that required a super majority. Didn't it? Yeah, and someone who had voted against the other did vote for that because the right. decision was made to basically change the land use or change the, the zoning. Yep. Yeah, and there's going to be a, so right now they're working on getting an open house for the neighbors and the, and the, the developer. Um, I, it really was very compelling at the workshop um, because I, I, speaking for myself, couldn't imagine any high density use that I would like there. I really couldn't. And then I looked at this project and went, oh, I like that project. That's a, it's, it's very compelling. They spent a lot of time creating something for that parcel. They met with the Mercy Hospital administration. They met with the college administration. And they said, we, we support this because we see a value in having those units there. So we have a lot more discussions to go forward as we discuss use flexibility and everything else. Um, and they're looking at doing a neighborhood open house, I think around like December 1st, down at the Ice Center. Um, and that'll be formalized here shortly. Okay. So previously, I know in some of the dissension on at least one council member, maybe more than that, was the whole talk of, as far as changing land use that we, in the past, have not talked about a specific project looking at that. You're looking at specifically the land and whether yeah. the use fits. Is this a change going forward then? Because we're, we're also trying to encourage people to bring projects to the city to put in some of these areas that we want to see things put in. Yeah. How do you not talk about a project and yeah. a land use as well? Yeah. Well, yeah, and the specific, the specific concern was that we don't engage in spot zoning. And in, in, in this particular case, I really, I, I thought it was very compelling, and, and like I just shared, that I couldn't imagine anything that would work there. Right. And they created something that all of a sudden changed my perception where I went, oh, I could see where that would work there. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't see this as spot zoning. Okay. Um, but if this project doesn't go through, if this falls through, that, that land is still now rezoned to high density, so any other seven, right. high but density project could come in, correct? Seven units per acre. Okay. So we still have a lot of control over what's, what goes there because we're only authorizing up to seven units per acre. Is this because? because that's high density code or is it also because it's part of a port? Because it's part of the River Rapids overlay. District. Okay. Yeah. So that gives you more control there. Right. Well. Yeah, if this if this would have just changed the zoning to and I don't even know what, you know, if this would have changed zoning to 30 units an acre or something. Yeah. There there wouldn't have been anybody I think that would have supported it. Okay. But because we still maintain control over what goes there, through, they have to come back for that use flexibility or design flexibility or a couple different things. Um, it felt like we need, we still had enough, we had control over what would go there. 
Okay. All right. So that uh, has been rezoned, and then uh, the next step with them to be bring the project forward. Correct. Right. Yeah. And that's that. There, there'll be neighbor a neighborhood open house, and then we'll just see how things are going. And I yeah. I have no idea what council is going to think of that right. project. Right. And it still has to go through planning and and all yeah. of that as well too. Correct. All right. So more to come there on that. More to come. Moving along, council adopted a resolution. This was considering the sale of ten million dollars in general obligation bonds. Sure. Um, so this was uh, sort of packaging up a few things that we needed, and uh, uh, well, I'm not sure where we're at. There we're we on go. item number nine. nine. There we go. So part of the ten million dollars. So five million of that will finance the MSA street projects, and then we had talked about that before that. You know, we we did the projects, and then we we uh, we we bought bonds for financing it, and then we'll pay the bonds back with the state contribution for the MSA roads. So five million of that was for the MSA streets, and then four million was for water revenue bonds, and uh, that's for uh, towards replacing the water mains and the project areas and things like that, and then uh, seven hundred eighty thousand is towards the uh, park bond referendum mm -hmm. so and we're on we're on track with that so we authorized the sale of 10 million dollars in general obligation bonds and they got a really good interest rate Coon Rapids has a great credit rating and they put it out for bids and everybody was al alarmed at how low the interest rate was mm -hmm. and I, I want to say it was like 1.4 or something they were anticipating something higher and I don't remember the number now but it saved us Saved us a lot of money. All right. So we're also looking to capitalize on those low interest rates. We're still in this low interest rate environment. Who knows for how much longer with uh, right. the Fed looking to raise rates here probably next month. So stay tuned on that, right? Stay tuned. So lock in on yeah. some of these and uh, get the best bang for your buck, it seems like. All right. Well, that's all we had to talk about from our first meeting of the month. Uh, we should mention Councilmember Demmer brought it up. I thought it was interesting timing, but the new disc golf course <laughs> opened at Wood Woodcrest Park. Woodcrest yeah. and Wintercrest parks, yeah. it says here. Just in time for the snow to fly. Yeah, well, if, if we get <laughs> snow this year. Yeah. That's true. It has been warm. You probably could take advantage of it it's, here. So. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so th and that's something that we, the, the people here have been wanting one of those for quite a while. Right. I know my own kids, you know, the, the, the cross-country team over at the high school, yeah. they do a lot of the disc golf things, and they would always go over to, have to go to Brooklyn Park yeah. to play or somewhere else. So it's really nice to have our own course here. Yep. That'll be cool to see people out there playing and getting yeah. more enjoyment out of our parks. Yeah, and then we had a uh, um, the uh, uh, the new bank it was for first advantage sold. They just had the ribbon cutting border bank. Okay. So border bank just had their uh, grand opening this week, and then we just had a, another ground breaking uh, for the dental specialists up yeah. on North Dill Boulevard, um, kind of by the Aldis up there. And that is absolutely, I, I had no idea the significance of that project there. You know, we've, we've got the, the LASIK eye clinic down at Coon Rapids mm -hmm. Boulevard. And I recall when they, when they had their grand opening, talking about the machine they had there, that there's like one in Chicago and one in Boston. I mean, it's just this really, it's, it's amazing that we've got that in Coon Rapids. I think a lot of it is because Mercy Hospital sets up that area of medical things. Well, now this new dental specialties with their surgical centers, um, they've got this incredible surgeons that are there, and I'm talking denti to dentists mm -hmm. that say they're the top in the region. Mm -hmm. And it's in Coon Rapids. It's yeah. wonderful. We've got a lot of good things going on here. Good to see. And we also just learned this week, uh, for folks interested, uh, CenturyLink is opening up a store where you can actually go in and demo some of their products. If you're interested, they now offer the Prism TV service where you can get our channels. Uh, you might be seeing us on Comcast now, but they do offer that. Uh, but their store is opening here this week, uh, the Friday before Thanksgiving. Yeah, apparently up in the uh, Riverdale Crossing where yeah. there's a million dollars in the new Hobby Lobby yeah. construction going on. Yeah. I think we did over $25 million in construction That's this year. Which was almost double the previous year. So. Yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, things are going great. It's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I have, unless there's anything else you want to add before we go. I don't have anything. All right. Well, we appreciate you being here today and talking to us about our two meetings in November. Thank you at home for watching, and we'll look for you back here again after our two meetings in December for our final show of 2016.